Hey, it's Ed, and I'm back again with what I'm hoping is going to turn out to be another short one. Today's topic is load calculations and why it's bad to use rules of thumb like X amount of square footage per ton. And this is a perfect example where I'm going to show you a perfect example of how that is a flawed way of looking at things. This is the house that I'm doing a bid for a replacement on. It is an approximate 1,850 square foot structure. It has an existing system. I'm not going to do a full duct design on it. I am simply looking at what the requirement is for air conditioning in this structure. I did a very basic drawing of the place. Uh, this is a little better than what I would normally do because I knew <laughs> that I was going to be um, putting it out there for public consumption. So if you look at the house over here, I was fortunate enough to get access to the original plans. It's a kind of a squarish rectangle shape, and it's got this one, I'm going to call it a appendage, uh, sticking out the front. It's the fifth bedroom. This is also a retirement community. And if you want to blow this up and look, you see these bedrooms are tiny. That's to uh, discourage people <laughs> from staying for any length of time, or at least that's my theory. Straightforward stuff, uh, R13 in the walls, R38 in the roof, R19 in the crawl space, and we got R6 insulation on the ductwork that was code compliant in my market when the structure was first put up. Again, that's that weird bedroom, and I prefer to do block loads, as I alluded to earlier. What I want to do is one big room. I can't do that as easily as I would want to, so I'm going to do this house in two rooms. Right, well, this room's going to get done first, then this, when I put it through my software. So if I want to do a load calc, I grab my software program, and I'm not going to go through the step by step because it's not the point of this today. But I am showing you here where I did go through and, and put some of the information in. I want to point out right now that I'm going to do as well as my duct leakage because they're integral parts of the loss and or gain on the structure. So up here it has infiltration and this software you hit a drop down menu if you don't know what you're doing and it explains it. Uh, if you do know what you're doing you just fill your numbers in. Uh, it's easy with this uh, process because if you're doing it from uh, a simple observation uh, this house falls into the category for me for average. Uh, I go in the square footage, and it's going to set what my air change rate is. If <clears throat> excuse me, you want to take it a step further and do a blower door test on it, cool. Uh, it can give you more accuracy. Uh, if you're going to do a blower door test, though, do a multipoint because it's uh, if we're going to go through the this the well, I'm call it the hassle, but if you're going to go through the additional steps of doing a blower door test, let's get more accurate results. Uh, and I had some stuff flying in here. And I'm not going to go back and redo this. This is I'm working on something else. This is a one shot, but I thought thought it would be something pretty good to uh, catch some other instructors' attention and maybe uh, the mainstream of contractors that you know like rules of thumb. This is the screen for ASHRAE 152, I think is the standard number, and it allows us to essentially tell. The software where our ductwork lives it looks at some of the other information in the uh, calculation and uh, we tell it uh, an opinion of how much it's sealed and it will calculate an estimate of our duct leakage and to get back on track uh, this, i'm filling in the windows here if you look at my window sizes this is one of the ways that i get load calcs done a lot quicker unless i have shading if I have a gable end with zero shading, this would be an example of I really don't have a window in the structure that's 86 feet by one, <clears throat> but it's 86 square feet. Manual J doesn't care if you put individual windows in or if you put just one um, measurement that represents the entire fenestration to a specific direction. And that's ultimately what we need to calculate. And this shows the extent to which the information they collect is um, they even want to know what the reflection off the ground is and 
uh, internal shading. If you're doing load calcs, your internal shading default should be blocking half the window. That's the guidance in uh, Manual J. So I always use the uh, horizontal or vertical blinds for, on a 45, uh, and essentially that is going to give you a window that's half blocked. All right, I'm getting off of uh, my purpose of what this is really about. And what it's really about is I want to show the difference between a two-story house and a one-story house. This obviously is based off that first picture was an 1850 square foot ranch. And I've completed my load calculation on that structure. I'm going to show you the reports that it generated. And I'm not going to show you all of them, but I'm going to show you what our final answer is. And it shows us that our loss and gains are, are here. I don't care about tons. I care about individually uh, sensible BTUs and latent BTUs because that's the proper path to equipment selection. But what I'm really trying to point out uh, up here is that we came out at 837 square foot per ton. Uh, it's not 500, it's not 400, it's not some mythical number, it's a calculated value. And there you go, that's how many BTUs or uh, how many square foot uh, per ton. That's how we, that, that was our uh, final answer. Now, I'm gonna take this a step further and I'm gonna manipulate my drawing and take it from 1850 square foot as a ranch and I'm gonna cut half of that off and stack it, right? So now we have the same cubic volume, but this time it's stacked. So we have half the ceiling area and um, some other things change, but it's still the same square footage, or is it? So that's kind of the question here. Let me get the screen to advance, it's fighting with me. Oh, and I'm showing here where I, uh, change the size of the, the walls, and, but my uh, window or fenestration area is, is the same. So it's uh, kind of a fair comparison. Not kind of, it is a very fair comparison. So when we look at our final report, our sizing definitely changes. We were at around 23 and 3, or 26,000 total. It dropped 6,000. We went from what essentially... Not essentially. Uh, I have another video up here uh, using manual S to select equipment. It's these numbers. And we end up with a two and a half ton air conditioner running either a little, 1200, I don't remember what it is, but it's not, it's greater than 400 CFM per ton. But in this instance, this same structure, uh, we're looking at a two ton unit most likely, as long as I can find a two ton piece of equipment that's gonna give me at least 18,000 BTUs of sensible capacity. Over here, it gives me 540 per ton, and somebody goes, ha-ha, 500 square foot. No, this structure has 17 high foot walls. We ignored the ceiling on the first floor and the floor on the second floor. So what it really works out to is 1,080 square foot per ton. And that is very typical of when you take a larger ranch style house and you stack it, uh, your square footage per ton drops. It's It's math, right? This isn't rules of thumb, this is math. And that's a big difference when we look at some of the rules of thumb that people use. Now, I will point out that this was done in a market, a green grass climate, 90 degree design temperature. Uh, specifically, it's Long Branch, New Jersey, which isn't that far from where I live. But it's it's math. Again, it's not made up stuff. It is a uh, working process. So our conclusion for today, rules of thumb are just that, rules of thumb. If we want predictability, we gotta do math. And I would say for my market, predictability is going to be controlling humidity. Controlling humidity on non-design days is 80% of our summer, if not more. Uh, probably yours, too. So with that, I'm trying to keep these brief. Thank you for your time and attention. And if there's specific topics you want to hear about, let me know. Uh, I don't know what button to push to get this to stop. So uh, I'll see you later.